more sea monkeys died. Skip one turn. You're watching I Love the 70s on VH1. Hey, Yankees, you can take your apology out of your trophy and shove it straight up your ass. So you think you're a 70s fan? Okay, Oscar Meyer, we're going to go the distance. Can you boogie to this? It's I Love the 70s, and this is 1976. The flicks, the fashions, the trends, the TV, the tunes. The year that gave us these burning questions. What were the angels really doing with Charlie? How's your breaststroke, Jill? Oh, I thought you'd never ask, Charlie. Was Donnie really rock and roll? And I'm a little bit rock and roll. No, you're not. You're Mormon, and you're from Utah. And what was Richard Dawson's favorite pastime? I'm a cooking well stir. <laughs> yeah, he was on the joy juice. The answers to those questions, plus Messi and Sasquatch. I saw Bigfoot. For real. Because you love the 70s. Because you still think that $2 bill is worth something more than $2. This is 1976. Oh, yeah. Right on. Can you dig it? I love the 70s. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Love the 70s. I totally want to try this in that's some hard-hitting drama. I love the idea of all these women dedicated themselves in the police academy, but they were put in jobs as meter maids and traffic cops. And this man just said, hey, I just think you've done your time, you've done the work, and I want to empower you and take you higher. Charlie, are you in pain? Oh, I think it'll just be a matter of some death manipulation before I'll be standing as erect as ever. It was about three women that are going to go fight crime, and they're going to do it wearing whatever needs to be done. And that's going to mean getting into a bathing suit sometimes, and it's not going to stop them. It bordered being slightly over the top. And yet they were smart, sexy, fun, and had a little fantasy. My favorite angel was Farah. She's the one you remember. Something for the Lord. What denomination are you, little lady? 35, 24, 35. Ooh, Barracuda! She was on the show for one year and came to represent the entire series and became a phenomenon. Suddenly, everyone had that blown dry. What was it called? What was it called? The, the Farrah Fawcett hairdo. We all wanted it. Feathers. It all became about curling back. She was probably the hottest sex symbol of the mid-70s by a long mile. The poster, baby. The poster. You could see uh, erasers. Farrah Fawcett, 70s. Touching yourself in an impure, non-Catholic way. Your mom, why is that on your ceiling above your bed? You guys are touching themselves to that stuff. That's what they tell me. I think I always had a penchant for a cross between probably Farah and Jacqueline Smith. Have you got a tape deck in your car? Yeah, why? Well, a little drive, a little music turns me on. I had Jacqueline Smith stickers all over my bicycle. You betcha. I fancied myself to be like Jacqueline Smith. Yeah. But um, everyone always thought I should be Sabrina, which was very traumatic for me and upsetting. She's a lady. She was the really smart, brainy one. Not quite so pretty. Kind of maybe on the d side. Can I say that? Hi. I've heard about you. Oh, yeah? What'd you hear? It's you good. Watch Charlie's Angels. You figure Charlie and or Bosley is sleeping with one or two or three of the angels. How's your breaststroke, Jill? Oh, I thought you'd never ask Charlie. And who was this Charlie guy anyway? You never saw him, which was really weird. He was just omnipotent. Amen. It was almost like he was God and Bosley was Jesus. Get around! And they were like the three wise men, except that they were really just hot chicks in bathing suits. But at the end, I think they were all doing God's work. Lord, give it. And the Lord... Take us away. Jack Turkey. No offense to our Muslim friends, but for me, going to Mecca was going to see Kiss. The outfits and the explosions and the, and the excitement of their shows. Was phenomenal.
phenomenal. It was theatrical. It was like David Bowie, but better. I'm a sergeant in Kiss Army, by the way. I could have been promoted, but I like staying down with the troops. As a 10-year-old kid, you look at those pictures of a guy vomiting blood, and you're like, I can do that? Introducing Kiss Your Face Makeup. You can look like Gene, look like Paul, look like Peter, or look like Ace. Kiss your face and get your act together. Jumping on my bed playing air guitar and dreaming about kissing Ace Frehley, he was mine. I had a crush on Paul Stanley. For me, Gene Simmons, he was the man. If you, Paul's your favorite, then you're gay. Gene Simmons in the woman department has done pretty good for himself. He claims 4,000 women or so. I know Gene, and I believe it. I think it's double as just being modest. The best thing about Kiss is that when another boy made fun of you on the playground and said, but you play with dolls, you could say, yeah. I do. I still do have my kiss dolls and my kiss cards and everything. What do you think my sister's Barbies did when they saw these guys coming? I'll tell you what they did. They clapped and screamed and threw their panties at them. I love 76. It is time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet Show tonight. 76 was a huge year for the Muppets. It was the year the Muppet Show started. Muppet Show was like religious in our house. We watched it all the time. I thought the Muppets were a great idea. They had great musical guests. They had Elton John playing with the Muppets, you know? That's huge. I think he got the idea for all of those crazy costumes from the Muppet Show wardrobe department. We were a little wild and crazy ourselves. Want to know my favorite Muppets? I'm a Swedish chef who would just, you know, be trying to get those chickens into the pot. He's like up there cooking away and he's urgin, urgin, urgin. Yeah, everybody loved the animal because he'd just freak out and destroy everything. Bunny rabbit! Ah! Well, animal was cool. Bunny crazy guy. This is gonna be the great All we know about Gonzo is that he liked chickens primarily. There she is! In prison slang, we all know what a chicken is. Skinny young dude. That's what Gonzo liked. Skinny young dudes. My favorite characters of the Muppets were the two guys that sat in the balcony and just shot on everybody. Are you ready for the end of the world? Sure, it couldn't be worse than this, y'all. <laughs> there was something about Miss Piggy that set my heart aflutter. Hey, man. You know what? what? You're lovely. I think that's what it was. It could have been indigestion. She had her blonde hair. She had her little dresses. Always had cleavage. So if I hold you in my arms. Miss Piggy and Kermit. I thought that was a bad match. My thing is, pigs, stay with your pigs. Frogs, be with your frogs. What do you come out with? With a, with a piggy frog? Bib and napkin, knife and fork is the only way that I'll touch pork. It's funny, the, the success of The Muppet Show didn't really affect our relationships with each other. Like any family, we have our disagreements and quarrels, but at the end of the day, if everybody agrees with Miss Piggy, nobody gets hurt. <laughs> I do remember the movie Carrie. I think the lesson in that movie was don't pick on the weirdos because they're probably really witches. What Carrie lacked in friends and popularity, she made up for in murderous telekinetic power. It seems like a fair trade off. The whole, you know, misfit, you know, oddball versus the click, that dynamic made it very cool. Got a black magic woman. Carrie's mama was a witch. That's what it was. It just went down in the Carrie. That's all. I can see your dirty fellows. What? Everyone will. Anyone who's taken a sex education course knows that dirty pillows is another word for breasts. They're cold breasts, mama! And every woman has them. The memorable scene was like the locker room scene because they're all like running around naked. <laughs> We're throwing um, tampons at her. 
when she was crowned the prom queen, they put a bucket of blood over the top of her head. You just knew then that sister had enough. She was going to get them. I think I'd start whipping some ass with the blood all over me, too, so she did the right thing. And like, you think you're getting out of the gym? I'll look at that door and I'm going to get closed right now. She just went crazy. So I don't throw tampons at nobody. You don't make fun of the chick with the dirty pillows. And whatever you do, don't invite them to the prom, because then you're really asking for trouble. I love 76. Coming up, get out your giant mallet. It's time for the gong show. It seemed like they had a session while drunk and came up with all these bits. Plus, everybody wants a bite of Oscar Mayer's meat. Kids and wieners. I think you got to draw the line somewhere. And the open secret of Starsky and Hutch. Every episode would end with them in a very sort of gay situation. Next on I Love 1976. But first, the roller rink anthem of 1976. Leif Garrett here telling you to bust out those tough skins and lace up those skates. Because it's time for the roller rink anthem of 1976. Oh, what a night. Late December, back in 63. December 1963. Oh, what a night. By the Four Seasons. The roller rink anthem of 1976. You know I didn't even know her name. Foxy Ladies of 76. Yes. Eric Estrada here sending out an APB for the Foxiest Ladies of 1976. Do you copy? Heart. Foxy Rock Chicks. Ooh, Barracuda. Jessica Lang. Fox meets Giant Ape. Giant A, balls for Fox. Yes. And Lauren Hutton, the Fox who never saw the Octodonis. And thank God. That's a big 10-4 on the Foxy Ladies of 1976. And yes, they can call me Ponch any day. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. From Hollywood, almost live, it's the Gong Show. Gong Show is awesome. It was so silly, and I think what we're seeing today with all these reality shows is that people want to see untalented people, and they want to see people make fun of them. He went to watch the losers. It was right out front. You wore it on the lapel, and everybody couldn't wait for the big faults. The Gong Show featured C-level celebrities rating these people. Celebrities who were at the same level as, say, I am today. So it was J.P. Morgan and Jamie Farr, Artie Johnson. It's like the, you know, the I, we can't get a job circuit. Hey, Dougie babies, good to see you back, especially after seeing your front. <laughs> there were things that weren't officially an act. They were just part of the craziness of the show. He was a horrible dancer. It was just so odd. It seemed like they had a session while drunk and came up with all these bits, and somehow it all worked. Let's meet a man now who knows one thing in his can, one thing in his can. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought Chuck Barris was insane. Even back then, I was like, this guy's mad. He's like on drugs or something. And then it turns out he was. Let's have... Let's be... I'm all confused. I'm a magic man. The guy was just teething his way through cocaine binges the entire time he was hosting that show. And the winner is Elliot Epstein. At the end of the show, whoever got the highest score um, would win a prize. They won like almost nothing. They won that big, brought that big check and it was like for almost like, what was it, like 100 bucks or something? And here's your check for 5, 16, 32. Thank you, Stevie Albert. Everybody loves the college. There's a family, and they're in some kind of crazy pose. Somebody's always like this, you know, somebody's like that. They'd be introduced in sort of a western scene setting, and they'd be frozen. And then, magically, these portraits would come to life. Means something you can do with a nose. Something you put in your pants. 
Top ten answers on the board. Number one answer. And somebody go. Penis. Let me see blow. Number one. Name a brand of deodorant. A uh, band. You're at home going, secret, secret. Family Feud is the show where Richard Dawson makes out with people for half an hour. Now, what is your daughter? I think I'm in love. He's not. Oh, he's going to kiss Grandma. But you don't do it not with an 80 year old. Oh, God. Shirley, I think I'm in love. Thank you. We might have to run away whether you win or not. Let's just have a little sauce. Yeah, he was on the Joy Juice. Did you bring any with it? No. <laughs> Clearly drunk the whole time he was hosting the show. I'm a cookie monster. <laughs> Respected actor. Jimmy speaking. Now he's doing the feud. I shall be up the Napa Valley very soon. You'd hit the bottle, too. The next guy who hosted the show ended up killing himself. So if Richard Dawson needed a couple of cocktails to keep it together, hey, let me go get a bottle for you. How many drunk, bitter English game show hosts are there? Ah, uh, Richard Dawson, good answer! Survey says me! I love 76. Hey, I'm Donnie. I'm Marie. I wouldn't miss a single episode of the Donnie and Marie show. Yeah, loved it. Donnie and Marie are the brother, sister act. A la the Carpenters, they sang songs, they had their own television program. Marie's always been hot, you know, cutie. As a child, I even thought that Marie was sort of riding on Donnie's coattails. They were wholesome, they were white bread, they were gifted. And I thought Donnie was hilarious, I really did. I really thought he was just like so funny. Why? Remember that you did the big ice spectacular? What the f was that? Donnie and Marie on ice. Crazy, crazy, crazy. How did they get their teeth so white? Did they sandblast them? I remember watching it thinking these people should be doing Colgate commercials. I'm a little bit country and I'm a little bit rock and roll. Was Donnie really rock and roll? Come on. I don't think so. I'm a little bit of what in Nashville with a little bit of Motown in my soul. No. He never had any Motown in his soul. Don't know if it's good or bad. Who wrote that sh for them? I know I love it so. I didn't get it. Didn't get that memo. And I'm a little bit rock and roll. No, you're not. You're Mormon and you're from Utah. Made tomorrow. People would think, oh, they're, you know, Donna Marie is like, they're just uh, goody two shoes. Well, you know what? Actually, they are. <laughs> Somehow they made it work. They turned that dynamic into television gold. How they did it? Magic. Good night, everybody. I'd like to be an Oscar Mayer wiener. That is what I truly like to be. If I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, everyone would be in love with me. Oh my God, it doesn't make any sense though. Kids should like us all. Yes, but I love you. Right, this is the commercial about uh, everybody wanting a wiener. That's what they'd like to be. They'd like to be a wiener at a certain point. If I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, Everyone would laugh at me constantly. People would point at me and say, you are a wiener. That poor wiener. Because he was so lonesome. Be happy for what you are. But it was really embarrassing, the fact that they called it a wiener. Our wieners are good for lots of things. <laughs> You're like... There are certain words that after a while, they aren't funny anymore. Wiener is not one of them. Look. The 70s were about acceptance. They were about pushing the sexual frontier. But kids and wieners, I think you gotta draw the line somewhere. You take care of the big things, and we'll take care of the wieners. I love Macho Men of 76. When you're 10, you know a thing or two about men. Macho Baby! Bo Derek here with the Macho Men of 1976. Peter Frampton. Macho Man Comes Alive. Bob Marley, Macho Mon, and Jimmy Connors, Game, Set, Match, Macho Man. Macho, Macho, Macho Man, yeah. I love the 70s, I love the 70s. You talking to me? You talking to me?
talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. I'm the only frog here. I guess you're talking to me. Taxi Driver was the most frightening film of the decade for me. I think De Niro was just really scary. Uh, amazing film. Robert De Niro was absolutely amazing. Travis was a great character in there. Robert De Niro. I actually like Bob very much in that. Travis Bickle is the embodiment of urban alienation. He's out to save the world, or so he thinks. He's obsessed with cleaning. All the animals come out at night. Someday a real rain will come and wash all the scum off the streets. One man, he's going to make a difference. He tries to rescue a prostitute. Sell your little for nothing, man. For some low-life pimp. Jodie Foster in that movie? Hot. She was 12. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. As he descends further and further into the abyss, there is one person who could save him from this abyss, the beautiful Sybil Shepherd. I think that you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. You sex the bang, sex the bang, you. Travis Bickle's a romantic, but he also has a very artsy side to him, so he takes Sybil Shepherd's character to a Swedish film. I don't think it's a Bergman film, but it's a Swedish film. You gotta be kidding. What? This is a dirty movie. It's like a lot of dates that I've had, honestly. You know, you take a girl out for the first time, you take her to a porno movie, and uh, just see where things go from there. She eventually rejects him, and that sets him off into a rage in which he starts shooting everybody. He goes and kills a pimp, and by the end, the whole thing is just a big, bloody, disgusting mess. And he gets away with it at the end, too. That's the best part. Violence and uh, underage prostitution. That's a 70s movie. I love 76. Cops, cool car, solving crimes. Revolutionary show. Hey, punk. It's us, the good guys. Apparently they were undercover, even though everyone knew who they were. You know what can happen if I'm just seen talking to you two guys? Starsky was Paul Michael Glazer and Hutch was David Soule. They were supposedly had an edge to them and they were just kind of young, tough cops that worked the streets. My first major crush was Paul Michael Glazer. I just thought he was the hottest thing around. That car was pretty badass. <laughs> It was a Ford Torino and it had that cool stripe on it. You know, Paul Michael Glazer predominantly drove because they sort of portrayed him as the smarter one. And Where is it? That's all. Had to be like shooting from the hip wild, you know, that loose cannon. Hey. They had an informant on the street named Huggy Bear. What do you think I called you for? Not to tell you? It was a pimp snitch, which I think in the hood would probably get your ass beat if not shot. Nothing more charming than a rat. You know what they say, Huggy Bears is where the elite meet. Yo, what's up, Hutch? Some <laughs> have been looking for you and Starsky, my man. Well, Huggy, remember we're on network television. See, I don't give a f on Antonio Farkas. The real distinctive thing about the series was every episode would end with them in a very sort of gay situation, sharing this moment together. You know, it's like they turned off the camera just before they kissed. <laughs> Whoa, Dr. Funkenstein here. Look, and now the doctor goes to work. Dr. J was the bomb. I saw Dr. J do things that I've never seen again in basketball. He was like the uh, John Coltrane of basketball. How could somebody do that? And it was such poetry, you know, watching that guy move. A number of people have asked me about that. Mm -hmm. You know, do I think of uh, myself in terms of you know, a, a ballet dancer? Every now and then I'll see a highlight of Julius Irving jumping nine feet in the air with the afro, 12 times bigger than mine and his. I that thing was just perfect. Dr. J had the best afro in the seven. A lot of people who watch this are probably young people who have seen Michael Jordan take off from the free throw line, but again, it was the doctor who did that first. Dr. J came. I just said, this must be it. This is the last stop. I don't even think nobody could take basketball further than this guy. 
he just changed the whole game. The doctor. News break. Bigfoot, as probably you know, is a giant gorilla or something that prowls the woods of the West Coast. Right. No question that Bigfoot's real. Who can make something like that up? Hey, they're monkeys and they're us. There's got to be something in between. And it was Bigfoot. Yeah, the really love to see you tonight. I saw Bigfoot. For real. Bigfoot scared the bejesus out of me. What was Bigfoot's, like, threat? Like, was he going to step on you? Like, yeah, he, like, what size were his Bigfoot shoes? Bigfoot ain't bothered anyone. There was the one guy who would wear the Bigfoot shoes and run around making fake prints to throw off the other Bigfoot trackers. I was a little pissed about that. You know, all those rumors about uh, Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, none of them are true. I happen to know that because I know them personally. The Loch Ness Monster in Scotland has been hunted, sighted, and maybe photographed by all kinds of expeditions, scientific, frivolous, and just curious. The Loch Ness kind of bothered me because of that one shot. And it just looked like bubbles underwater. Like, this shot definitively proves that Nessie exists. I'm like, it's, I don't see anything. is that it was a giant swimming phallic symbol in Scotland. Maybe, okay, I'll give it up for Loch Ness Monster. Could have been a guy's fist, some guy giving a black power symbol in the middle of the lake. Who cares? Every time I've seen it, it's just like the bottom of an upturned boat, uh, but a little bit more humpy, and it's black. <laughs> I'll tell you, she's a lot prettier uh, in person than she is in, in pictures. Yeah. Eight track classic. Do you feel like we do? Frampton, he really did come alive at that time. Back then, you were issued Frampton Comes Alive at puberty. Remember that album cover? Hello. He was hot. Sexy, long, froey hair. <laughs> Peter Frampton song is Do You Feel Like I Do because in the chorus he goes Do you do and when I was eight years old somebody singing Do You Do it was just too good a poop joke for me to pass up they played the song on the radio 24 hours a day even like the squirrels in the trees were singing Do You Feel Like I Do Do You Feel and everybody went <sighs> And you talk with the, the voice box. Gee, why did that ever catch on? What, 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 what? What? Our band were trying to figure out how we did that, so we tried to rig up something with the garden hose and asphyxiated ourselves. It's a talk box. It's, it's 89 dollars at Guitar Center. Go buy one. It's cool. You did. At the car wash. Working at the car wash down. That song was incredible, and the movie was hot, too. We'll celebrate car wash workers. There's a built-in audience right there. All the dudes who work at car washes are going to be like, finally, finally they're going to tell my story. Stand and deliver, honey. Oh! They had everybody doing their own thing, but it all revolved around the car wash. There's a prostitute who stays in this bathroom and changes her clothes all the time. I've always been a first and thigh man myself. I remember TC. <laughs> that afro was kind of overstated, though, but he believed in it. He thought he looked good. Yeah, you know, somebody around here got to have a little fast. Then you have this one guy who's a Muslim, and he's the angry black man who's tired of working at the car wash. We get a chance to run your white ass, and y'all get a chance to sing We Shall Overcome in Chinese. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Richard Pryor. Uh, played uh, either a preacher uh, or a pimp, one or the other, but it all came off the same way. There's a good place in this world for money. <laughs> yes, sir, and I know where it is. It's right here in my pocket. <laughs> Richard is overly hip to the point where it's almost spoofed. If I wasn't a Christian man, I'd probably be kicking in your way. He was dead on the times. From dress to the attitudes to the language in the thing to the afros to the music. Perfect. I love 76. Go 
Coming up, hooray for America and worthless new currency. You know what they're worth today? Two dollars and one quarter. Plus, Morris Buttermaker, model Little League coach. Who better to put in the care of your children than an alcoholic pool cleaner? And let's hear it for the Italian stallion. Rocky just catches it. Boom! Knocks the chin down. Next on I Love 1976. But first, remember this. That's called the devil's ring. And that's called ring around the collar. Ring around the collar. Dirty rings. I tried sprays. I tried powders. Then I discovered whisk. Whisk is strong enough to get ring around the collar and your whole wash load clean. No more ring around the collar. No more ring around the collar. Collar. Whisk. Strong enough to get ring around the collar and your whole wash clean. Wonder of 76. I'm Linda Carter. <laughs> Bringing you the wonders of 1976. All the world is waiting for you. I was so wondrous in 1976. There wasn't much room for other wonders, but we were blessed with Perrier bottled water, I Love New York logo, and one hell of a bicentennial bash. Rocky. Oh, boy. Well, what a hit that was, huh? I remember the first time I saw it, we came out of that theater, man, and we were just so pumped up. Rocky is basically a story of down and out, unknown boxer getting a shot at the title. I love the scene uh, in, the, in the meat locker where he's training. I worked at a meat packing plant back then, you know, so I'd go into the Hormel and pound some meat. And I go home and pound some more meat. But anyway, uh... The one mind-blowing scene <laughs> that just made everybody go, Ugh! was when he popped those eggs in there. I remember I got raw eggs. I drank them down, and I thought it was going to help me get in shape and stuff. And after I threw up, you know, I decided, well, maybe I better leave that up to Stallone. Like, to this day, you know, whenever there's a huge flight of steps... I have to do that. And there's the bell. Fight starts, you know, and Apollo's like, ah, just like peppering Rocky, and Rocky just coming ahead, and, Paul, and then Rocky just catches him. Boom! Knocks the champ down. And it just really got you going, got you up. And the combination of, of the beating that he took, and then when they had to slash his eyes. Come in, Mick. <sighs> Cut me, Mick! Quick! This young punk from the streets of Philadelphia, you went the distance. Have you ever gone the distance? I think not. Adrian! Sally. Get her presents Stretch Armstrong. You can stretch him all kinds of ways. Stretch Armstrong was really into working out. He was very good looking. He was the gay version of Ken. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is really bringing back some memories. You can stretch his arms. Just remember him that you could pull his arms. Super. You can stretch his legs. I can't afford it. The only thing I play with myself. And you just pull it and go back into place. You get stretch, stretch would come out of the wrapper. You and your brother would pull stretch well past his tolerance. It was like the coolest thing in the world. Wrap him up in a ball, tie his arms together. He'd come back to his original bulky, blonde, perfect shape. You can do all these things with him. Of course, it appeal, appealed to boys mainly because at a certain age they discovered that their scrotum can stretch and stretch and stretch. That was essentially the principle behind Stretch Armstrong. Wow, this is stretchy. Stretch Armstrong. As soon as you had Stretch as far out as he could possibly go, then somebody would go get the scissors to see what was inside of him, and that was the end of that. I had like three of them because I kept cutting them up to see what he was made out of. If you punctured Stretch Armstrong, a viscous sort of jelly would ooze out of him. Stretch Armstrong was fun, but those are toys that are fun for 15 minutes. 
And then you want to see what it's like when you put a firecracker up Stretch Armstrong's ass. I don't think anybody owned a Stretch Armstrong longer than an hour. Stretch got f***ed up early. <laughs> I love 76. Captain Kangaroo? Sure, sure. I was a fan of Captain. We watch that every week. You're terrific. Five ah. and one makes six. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. With Captain Kangaroo, we see for the first time after the humiliation of Vietnam, the resurgence of the armed forces. And it begins with the militarization of children's television. I don't know why I was so Captain Kangaroo. I never saw a kangaroo. Uh, was he a real captain? Like, could he marry me uh, if I was on his boat? Maybe he came from a rich tradition of seagoers. Maybe he served in combat in some way. And he came back and he just wanted to enrich the lives of children across the world. Captain Kangaroo to this day confuses me. I don't really know what he was doing. Was he on a farm? He wore funny outfits like Colonel Sanders. I used to get him mixed up with Colonel Sanders. He looked like a walrus. Hello, it's me. I recall, kind of walrusy, didn't he? He had a red suit and the gray hair. You know, it's funny, when I think back about these children and enter the, the entertainers, the whole thing's kind of creepy. I, I guess Mr. Green Jeans, we ought to leave Bunny Rabbit alone. Watching him, I could use my imagination as what he would do after the show. And I always thought of him going to like strip joints and drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels with a bunch of uh, his buddies, you know, and be like, okay, boys and girls, and then it's a wrap. Get me a drink, damn it. Oh, no, you don't, Bunny Rabbit. I think he's dead. He's not dead. He's dead. Brandon Bears is amazing because it's such a good movie. Walter Matthau is the washed up drunk who came out of the bottle, if you will, to manage a team of young players who really weren't any good. Who better to put in the care of your children than an alcoholic pool cleaner? You're not supposed to have open liquor in the car. It's against the law. It's always murder, Engelberg. Now put that back before you get me into real trouble. I think that the character I related to was Lupus, the booger-eating spaz. Does that booger-eating spaz make me want to puke? One kid, oh. Tanner, is so foul-mouthed. I don't want to say it now because you just bleep it anyway. So we got on this team as a bunch of <laughs> Tanner's like the little kid. He'd always get pissed and storm off the field. He would just be like, what? Bitch? I don't think I like a kind of truck <laughs> <laughs> Then, of course, there was Kelly Lee. The baseball you guys play is for f***ing old farts who don't have anything better to do with themselves. The bad boy, motorcycle riding degenerate, but he could swing a mean stick. I like this scene where Kelly Leak is hustling the adults at air hockey for a bucket game. In your mind, you're like, why am I not doing this? Engelberg, who was the catcher, loved eating chocolate bars. There's energy in chocolate. I need energy. Well, the good thing about Bad News Bears is it doesn't subscribe to any stereotypes because you wouldn't want that with, with kids, of course. This is for Allah, and it's going way out there, sucker. I'm almost 12, and I'll, I'll be getting a bra soon. And the person who really brought it all together was Tatum O'Neill. Got my curve breaking two and a half feet. The young female pitcher of the team who had a nasty curveball. Right, right. About that movie is that they did not win in the end. Hey Yankees, you can take your apology out of your trophy and shove it straight up your ass. Just wait till next year. And the bad news bears celebrate. I love 76. Coming up, the bicentennial, America's 200th birthday. Time to get drunk. We got out the Jack and the Coke, and we went crazy. Enough patriotism to choke Paul Revere's horse. Next on I Love, 1976. But first, the follicle fat of 76. Hi, I'm Isaac Hayes with your follicle fat of 1976. Oh, yeah. The Dorothy Hamill for the ladies. And for the fellas, the shag, baby. It just made those teen idols even prettier. And who knows more about hell than me, baby? 
Bella says the primate of 76 is... the bicentennial celebrating our flag and our country red white and blue and in my case green yeah <laughs> we're officially a country for 200 years which in terms of the world means we're basically like nine years old emotionally remember the sailboats on the east river it must have been on hudson <laughs> everything was a bicentennial sail from you know cars to sheets to um Hookers. I remember being fixated on the bicentennial half dollar. Bird on the back of it. Ooh. They also had the bicentennial quarter that came out that year, and me and my brother were convinced that someday they'd be worth a lot of money, and we started hoarding $2 bills in bicentennial quarters. I was stoked when the $2 bill came out. You know what they're worth today? $2 and one quarter. That one worked out pretty well. Ooh -hoo. My mother had us all dressed up as great Americans. I was Ben Franklin. Woo! Oh, happy birthday, America! Fourth July, 1976, we had a big block party. Got my little brother drunk for the first time. I raged on the bicentennial. I was just about to turn five. We got out the Jack and the Coke, and we went crazy. Normally we like 4th of July, but this year really is going to mean something because it's 200 years. Big ending. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Whew, it's very tiring being patriotic. I love 76.